I've been a sleepwalker for even longer than I can remember. My parents say that I started sleepwalking before I started walking. Weirdly enough, as a baby, I'd somehow get my way up and out of my crib, something I never did when I was awake. It got so bad that my parents would take turns monitoring me at night. Every once in a while, I'd still manage to escape, though each of my parents swore up and down that they hadn't fallen asleep for even a minute. When I was old enough, I started being aware of what was going on while I was sleepwalking, or maybe that had happened all along, and I just don't remember it. At first, I didn't realize that it wasn't just a reoccurring dream. I would wake up floating in the air over my Teen Titans bedspread, seeing the arc of light cast on the wall by my nightlight. Somehow not feeling surprised at any of it. The air was quiet, but in a really active way, if that makes any sense. Like a transparent white noise that weighed on my eardrums and muffled out the whole world. I would float walk across my room and pass right through the door like a ghost. It still felt like a dream, like I was only a passenger in my body and didn't know where I was going to go next. When I was awake late at night, the dark house and its strange unidentifiable noises filled me with fear. But when I was just dreaming, It seemed perfectly safe and natural. My sleeping feet took me all over the house, upstairs and downstairs, in the kitchen and living room, even in Dad's private office that was explicitly off-limits. That time felt more like a nightmare than a dream. I knew I wasn't allowed in there, and I resisted with all my might inside my ghostly body though I can't say how, because I had no power of any kind. I gaped in horror as my eyes moved closer and closer to the door, right up until they passed right through the cheap white door and emerged on the other side. In the most control I had ever managed in one of my dreams, I managed to look away and obey my dad's rules, at least in spirit, even if not to the letter. After that, every time I awoke above my bed, my focus was on becoming more and more in control. Most of the time, it felt like rebelling against a strange body that wasn't really mine, and that wasn't really a person. Maybe I could hear something far away, or look at something that wasn't right in front of my face, or try to feel the dark world around me through my ghostly dream hands. I still had no reason to think that it was anything other than a weird dream for a weird kid who already had weird sleeping habits. Then, one night, I managed to take control of the dream legs. Instead of heading down the stairs like these dreams usually always began, I stopped them in their tracks. It felt strangely intense for a dream like electric crackling running from my ankles up through my thighs. I couldn't feel my feet against the floor as I float walked through the door to my parents' room. They were both asleep in bed, amazingly lifelike for what my imagination had come up with. I had never seen my parents asleep in bed before. After watching them for a couple minutes, I turned around and went to float out through the wall back to the hallway where my bedroom was. But as I did, the heavy, quiet, white noise in my ears gave way to a deep, sinister laugh. So loud that it felt as though my eardrums would explode, even in the dream. Suddenly, pain shot through my whole body as my eyelids snapped open. It was dark, and it smelled strange and my chest and shoulder hurt really, really bad. I couldn't move. It felt like there was no room to even expand my lungs. The air escaped in a scream that I didn't expect. I didn't even know I could make that kind of sound. I heard my parents get up and stumble around the room, the slam of their bedroom door and mine. 
as they sprinted from one bedroom to the other looking for me. I screamed again and again, bending my knees and elbows the few inches I could, trying to bang some kind of sound out. Then I heard pounding all around me and the shrieks of my mom and dad. That's when I realized where I was. I had woken up inside the wall. I had always been sleepwalking, not dreaming. It took seven hours to get me out of the wall. The firefighters had to use the jaws of life, but it took forever to figure out how. Pipes speared me through my abdomen and right shoulder, fortunately sparing anything that would have made me bleed to death during the extraction process. I couldn't even lay down on the stretcher because there were still three feet of pipe sticking out of my back that could barely close the ambulance door. No one could explain what had happened, and of course no one believed my version of the story. There were no wounds on the outside for the pipes to have gone through. It was like I'd just been born and grown up inside the wall, like they were just supposed to be there. The surgery seemed to do a ton of damage, like they were just cutting a big piece of my body out like the only stuff they had to stitch up were the incisions they were making. I don't know that I ever really recovered all the way, to be honest. But ever since, even when I was still recovering and incapable of walking on my own, I've insisted that my body stay firmly fastened to my bed, just in case I wake up floating overhead again, tethered like a possessed party balloon.